But it was one of those sacrifices one had to do. It wasn't a business, yeah, I mean, you don't get rich on it because uh, not everybody wants to buy handmade pottery. Ah, Willy Michalski, potter for over 45 years or more. Well, when I came to Australia, I had a coffee shop and I had this couple coming in for a cup of coffee and there were a couple of potters. And um, Ivan and Patricia England. So I, I was very interested. I started buying their pots and went to the exhibitions and, and I said, Thomas, Thomas, one day I'm gonna do these things. So Ivan became my teacher in Wollongong and uh, my inspiration he showed me how to you know how to build a kiln and the basic things so it was a basic process when I started and I, I started as a hobby first I didn't have not full time I had the job so I had to do it in, in the spare time I remember starting a, a huge building pot out of, dug out of the clay, out of the ground, just rough. And uh, I, built a, I built a kiln in my backyard in the house. And I built, built a kiln that I even designed. So that was my first kiln, my first experience. And it was quite a bit of a disaster, you know, because I, I didn't know much about it. Salvador is so frail. He's an artist. He, he used to come and paint my pots and we had an exhibition together. But that one has a crack, so I kept it. Naughty Salvatore. Pia? Yeah? Can you get me a bit of water in, in this bucket down on the horse? You know where the horse is? What I like is just, I go for the minimalism, simple forms, straight, straight lines and when you sit on the pot reveal say like I make a bottle you, you look alongside you look at the profile and you can tell if there's something not right you know so that is very important that everything is very aesthetically pleasing but I always that's for me that's the most important thing simplicity simple and, and the reason I always make pots with very narrow openings, because I didn't want to have people sticking things in. It should be perfect on its own without having something in it, yep. with it. So that was always my, my um, philosophy. The moment we moved here to the house, Jennifer and I, we said, well, I, uh, I have to go full time. And, and Jennifer agreed with it. So that was, that was our plan, you know, going full time. We had wish, you know, we never actually counted the cost or whatever, you know. But it was one of those sacrifices one has to do. It wasn't a business, yeah, I mean, you don't get rich on it because uh, not everybody wants to buy handmade pottery. Well, you've been potting since 78 
as a full-time thing, as a permanent sort of everyday work like life. But it has been a lifestyle for us. It hasn't just been ceramics, ceramics and working in a studio away from home or whatever. It's been our life. Well, no, I'm just a bit aging too much. I find it very difficult. Physically, it's a bit trying now. I can still work on the wheel, but I find it very hard. Picking the kiln and the glazing, it's a very tedious job. You just have to stand up all the time. But when you got a piece of pottery, you have to know what you want to put on it. And you have to visualize what it looks like when it's finished, you know? I actually got photos back where they, like a, a girl bought a whole set of pears sitting there, you know, and she showed me the set. Oh, we actually got a special light to put over it on the table, you know, to have them setting up. So they sent me the photos, which is wonderful. Oh, yes, yes, I got, uh, I got a few pieces, mainly art gallery got, uh, got uh, a selection of various potters up in there. They've got a special selection and, and uh, my pots are in there too as well. I'm quite happy with that. And this was our 30th show at the house. 30th? 30th. Mm -hmm. And I think we've never had it as um, packed with people and constant stream of people. There wasn't a dull hour, a dull moment. And people were going out with box loads. Mm. I just make your bowl. Okay. Decide what you have to do, you know? of potting I'm still learning there's no I, and I talked to a few students I said there's no no end to it you know like Sani was here he was my student and said never ending learning you know about these things yeah. you discover new things you try with the glazes you know so you put a bit more oxide in or this or that and you get different results and also different techniques what you you after, you know, if you want to have the reduction firing or you can have a sawdust firing or whatever, you know, they're all different tricks. And it's just such, it's really, I think you're lucky to have people show you how highly you're regarded. Yeah, I was really surprised. And a number of the people have a lot of your work. It's not just that they're yeah. buying their yeah, first I piece. Ex students coming for years, they used to be my students. One woman came today and she was his student prior to 91. And another girl was at Mossman. There's a lot of people that are yeah. students, but you know, it goes back many years. Okay. But no, I'm just, I'm really happy. Willie's work is, um, He's studious, he's a hard-working, diligent ceramicist. Um, and he's got work in three galleries in Sydney and he's got um, collected work, they have collected work at the Manly Regional Gallery. Yeah, okay. Three of them, his work. So he's been looked after in, in his career, but um, I just thought it was really very good today, this weekend. And we are sitting on the deck today looking and talking about the yeah. show. But, and you've, you know, captured it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really very proud.